first requirement is to understand. That does not mean to condone, because you put effort into trying to understand the adversary, does not mean that you are in any way liable to sympathise. Good morning, welcome to everybody. Uh, I'm Richard Birchall, the Director of Research and Engagement at Trends Research and Advisory. On behalf of Trends, ICSR and the Orfila Center at the University of California, Santa Barbara. Welcome to our two-day event on reconciling human rights, human security, and counterterrorism. Thank you very much, uh, Richard. On behalf of ICSR, I want to thank Trends Research and Advisor again, Dr. Ahmed and yourself, for what has been a very productive and fruitful partnership over the last uh, two years, and we're delighted again to be hosting this. We are used to new headlines, we're used to new interest, we're new, we have to fill this void constantly and therefore it has to be exciting. And to be exciting we have to have a conflict. And to have a conflict it has to be either security or freedom. International terrorism was used just as a code because nobody knew what to call the adversary. This is the first time the United Kingdom has been under attack by an enemy we haven't got a name for. So the more intensely extremism is described as a security issue, the less likely it is for the perceived threat from terrorism to naturally decrease. For 2016, over 29,000 fatal casualties, the second worst year since these records began. Our Home Office official, Sir, Sir David, I think yesterday, even he had to recognize that there were deep problems with the Obama's use of the drone strikes. Yeah? So even President Obama, symbol of human rights and democracy and equality, uh, was obliged to carry out something which is a clear violation of, of uh, human rights. And when we look at foreign fighters who have gone from the West, they go from a multiplicity of different reasons. But when you strip it all away, one of the core features, one of the most important aspects, is an issue of identity, belonging, your role and place, within society really comes down to the rather banal issue of integration. It's about having well-integrated, cohesive communities, societies in which people have a stake and a belonging. Enormously important uh, lesson. Each other as much as they fought the adversary. And the painful lesson was learned that the only way in which you can get on top of a serious terrorist situation is by acquiring uh, preemptive intelligence. And you only get that when you have cooperation, a genuine sense of teamwork. One of the key things about the Islamic State is that it leads with narrative. It is almost information operations first and then tactical operations second. It is this idea that groups and individuals want to bring about the Islamic State, the Caliphate. Now I know quite often working in the West, people just sort of shrug that off and say, that's, that's not gonna happen, so don't worry about it. But it's still a large motivator, and it's this idea that this A world order will be opposed upon us one way or the other, okay? And it's something I think we need to be looking at objectives over the means um, to get a better understanding of what is actually going on. All of this has a real impact for us in Europe because its proximity is much closer to us. This is really on our doorstep. And you can see the way, for example, a country like the United States is reacting by making it much harder for people to get in. They're pulling up the drawbridge. But for us in Europe, that isn't really an option. So whether it's founded or unfounded to a certain degree is not that relevant. What's relevant is that there are many, many people out there that are very scared of dying in a terrorist attack. And so it is affecting people's lives. And I think there's a tendency in the, in the human rights world of of not taking that into account enough in terms of the rhetoric. So how can I get that secret without using methods which in ordinary life you would regard as unethical? Policing is such a data-rich environment. Um, we don't analyse it enough. It would be really interesting when they come through to have a look at their expectations of what this dynamic fourth largest strategic police force looks like. Unfortunately, it's not going to look like CSI. There's nobody there that looks like Jack Bauer. Aleppo will fall. ISIS will not hold Raqqa and the eastern sides of Syria forever. They will also collapse. This will go down. That, again, in and of itself does not end or wind any of the real problems down. Either you focus on terrorism, which leads to high levels of fear but kills few, or you focus on the silent killers that most forget to fear 
And this is the human security logic that asks us to ignore the small danger but extremely powerful fear that terrorism generates and focus on human security. The US-centric world order has, maybe not discredited, but it's over. Uh, it might be the end of the end of history. We had painfully learnt that it's a good idea to treat terrorism as a crime. That does not mean that purely orthodox criminal methods uh, are sufficient, but they're necessary. So you still have to run the odd sting operation in order to disrupt arms flows into the terrorists and so on. We are essentially going through a phase of greater polarization. And so as that happens, again, you will find people searching for identity and belonging and meaning in all different ways. And this isn't just Muslims who will be doing this. Everyone will be seeking to do that. That broader cauldron of extremism then, I think again, will lead to uh, uh, more of a tipping point for people to engage in violent extremism. It certainly has a propensity to lead people down that path. The concept of the open society uh, is still a valid one, and it's something which we should hang on to uh, in what is clearly a period of, of uh, challenge. Uh, and in order to you know, just to be controversial, I'd like to just quote from Tony Blair saying you cannot defeat a fanatical ideology just by imprisoning or killing its leaders, you have to defeat its ideas.